Sirach chapter 5 verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring in all truth and sincerity to USA Shalom. This is the brother Amawan Ariyah from GMS Charlotte. Coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem And now is the time for you Israelites out here to stop playing with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Because everything that we're seeing taking place, all right, 2024 alone, but in general, in the world, man, we are seeing Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah beginning to put the finishing touches, all right, on this, uh, on this kingdom of Babylon the Great and begin to bring forth the judgment. And if you are not right in the eyes of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, your fate will be destruction when the Lord begins to, to render out that judgment. All right. So our job as being the prophets of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, all right, is to warn our people, all right, the elect of the nation of Israel to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right. This is the book of Sirach 5 and 7 again. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Right, man. Make no tarrying to return back to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. Hey, because this thing could very well, you know, pop off. You know, uh, in the next however long, man. All right. The, the scriptures tell you, all right, no man know of the day. But the Lord told us to measure the times. All right. And we measure the times by seeing what's going on in the world and pretty much tying it to Bible prophecy and, and what we're seeing, man. All right. Let's get that real quick. It's the book of Matthew. Chapter 24. And verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? All right. So the, the disciples were asking Yahweh Shah, all right, you know, tell us the, uh, the things that will be going on, all right, before you return, man. All right. And the coming of the end of the world. And Yahweh Shah answered and said, Unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And that's one thing that is being, you know, done in the earth, all right, is you got a lot of people pretty much, you know, amassing these fault, these great followings, all right, to pretty much, you know, be held up in worship as they are, you know, a, you know, a godsend from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, who the world, you know, calls God, you know. But at the end of the day, there's only one, all right, uh, there's only one Messiah, man, and that's Yahweh Shai. He's only coming for the nation of Israel, all right? So it says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and and shall deceive many. So you got a lot of our people, all right, being taken by these false prophets, these anti-Messiahs, man, all right, and being deceived, thinking that they have the answer, they have the way, all right? It's not preparing them correctly, all right, for the comings of what we're seeing, man. Because as the, the, the year through the spirit was coined, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, man, everything is gearing up, all right, to, to see that take into fruition. Lord willing, you know, these things happen this year, man, all right? The stage is being set, okay, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And, hey, we're constantly hearing of wars and rumors of wars, man. All right, you have the the big stage. All right, World War Three is being you know uh, uh uh prepped up, man. I believe you had one of the uh the people in the UN pretty much you know uh say how they're you know doing training 
to prepare for World War Three, man. All right, we know troops already have been sent over there to um to Gaza. All right, you're still having that conflict happen in Russia and Ukraine. All right, China's beginning to roll into Taiwan. All right, and the UN as a whole has said that they're calling for a ceasefire. Okay, what's going over there in that situation with, you know, Israel, Palestine, Israel and Palestine because they see that that is, you know, fueling the global conflict, which is going to eventually, you know, uh, lead up to World War Three, man, which is all the the will of Yahweh by Shem Shah. But even on a smaller scale, you have in, in the Americas, man. All right, over here in Babylon the Great, man. All right, war is being, you know, pushed up. Okay. It says, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and di and earthquakes in diverse places. And that's what we're seeing, man. All right. Nation rising against nation. Okay. Hey, Edomite against Edomite, man. All right. Because here, like I mentioned, in, in America, the whole situation with the border conflict, with all these migrants that's, you know, illegally coming into the United States. All right. You had uh, Texas pretty much make a stance to where they put, you know, a, a barbed wire over the border, all right, which will not allow migrants to cross over. And now you have Biden, you know, he gave a a 24-hour deadline, which passed two days ago for them to take down the wall. And the governor of Texas, he said he refused to. And so now you're seeing civil war pretty much being brewed, man. All right, as, as the whole 50 states, all right, a poll was taken that over... 25, which is half of the United States, are siding with Texas, man. So a civil war is brewing, man. All right? So that's your nation against uh, nation, kingdom against kingdom. Like I said, on big and small scale, it says, and there shall be famines. And, hey, we, we are in the midst of a famine, man. All right? While, yes, there's still food available, you know, in, in the stores and whatnot, man. We're eating GMO foods, man, and it's going to very well become an actual famine to where the stores are no longer going to have product for you to eat and drink, man. All right, which is going to be, okay, uh, um, you know, a, a major hit, especially here in America, because these people are not used to going without, man. All right, America has had a, 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 a custom of having abundance. So now as resources are beginning to dwindle, all right, the people are, are becoming, you know, more uh, 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 crazy, is, is for lack of better words, all right, because they're not used to seeing the condition that they're in, man. And so it's going to become a, a, a point to where a hey, houses are going to be getting broken into, all right, people are going to be getting, you know, uh, 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 killed for their resources. That's all for the, you know, the whole thing with the famine, okay? It says, and pestilences, which we already know, all right, we had, you know, the whole talk of, you know, disease X happening, all right, they're, they're, they're uh, the WHO, all right, they're calling for, you know, a, a nationwide, you know, um, what's the word, you know, the V, all right, they're, they're preparing for, yeah, it was the pandemic treaty, that's what it was, all right, to, to pretty much, you know, prepare for a, 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 a juice to get ready for disease X, man, all right, so, hey, these things are happening, these are the signs the Lord gave us, man, okay, it says in earthquakes in diverse places, and we already know you know, it, it's constant earthquakes going on all throughout the world, man. All right, just coming into 2024, man, you had two major earthquakes happen, you know, in Japan. All right, there's one in New York, all right? And I forgot the other place, man, but these earthquakes, you can look this up, all right? Happening every day, man, okay? Verse 8, it says, the, And all these are the beginning of sorrows. And this is why we're giving the, the warning unto you, you Israelites out here, man, all right? This this is coming in your lifetime. You will see this take place, man. So you need to be doing the, the necessary things to make sure that you are right with the Ha'abah Shem Yahushah so that you can be delivered and protected. All right, well, protected and delivered in, in the correct order. All right, from these different uh, plagues the Lord is about to set on the earth, man, which is why I opened back with five, uh, Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. And putting that off from day to day, man. Stop putting off your how about stream you shot, man. You should be preparing now because this thing can pop off at any point, man. So this is why we're constantly fortifying ourselves in the spirit to make sure that we are spiritually ready. All right. Our faith is, is cementing in your how about stream you shot so that we can be sure that the Lord is going to take care of us in that day, man. We got faith in that. And that's why we're making these videos for you other believers out there 
to be in the same mind frame, man. All right. It says, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security that shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And this is why you have a lot of two thirds. All right. I hear all these two thirds, all of our people, or well, majority of our people, so like you, who aren't taking this thing serious, man. All right. Who pretty much, you know, uh, uh, are, are secure in, you know, these, uh, their money, all right, in their weapons, all right, they're secure in their proud, you know, in the, uh, it's like in their pride, man, okay, thinking that these things are going are gonna to come unto them, man, that Jacob's trouble is not going to happen, that America is never going to be destroyed, whatever these stupid thoughts that our people have in our mind, they they don't, you know, take this, this, this message, this warning, all right, for what it really is, man. Which is why a lot of them are going to get caught up in this destruction, man. All right? And they're going to be having the same look on their face as you see in this picture on the screen, man. All right? In total dismay. All right? The Lord is going to destroy their spirits before he actually destroys them, man. And when I say their spirits, I'm talking about their, you know, their, their, their pride. All right? That, that security. You know, all that. The Lord is going to humble you. Okay? So this is Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. All right. So this is why we're constantly making these lessons, man. Constantly doing the vi doing the videos and giving you the warnings from the Lord out the scriptures, man. All right. It says, therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but the blood, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Right. And when it's speaking about the wicked in this verse, this is speaking of our people. Okay. Two thirds. If you, if you, uh, uh, if you're not, you know, uh, being warned. All right. Well, really all of our people, if you're not being warned and you have this wisdom. All right. For you teachers, you, you Jake's out here that know this truth, man. You're not out here teaching the people correctly and you're, you're not warning them. All right. And these people, you know, uh, uh, end up dying because of your, your neglect. The Lord is going to require their blood at your hands, man. This is why we continually, you know, uh, 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 making these lessons, like it says, man, giving him no rest, man. All right. Hey, these people, they, they're, they're become, you know, uh, uh, annoyed by us doing these videos because they, hey, all y'all talk about is the same thing, man, because we're supposed to, because that's the, that was the will of your how about Shemuel Shah. Cause when you go read the whole scriptures, all the prophets had the same message, man. All right. Just different ways of telling it. But they always talking about the same thing, man. Okay. So, and Yahushua repeated it his, himself, man. All right. The Bible is, is, is repetitive. Okay. Because it's building, all right, your, uh, your mind to know what Yahweh by Shem is, is demanding of you, man. Okay. And you know, with Jade, it's got to constantly be repeated over and over and over again, man. So this is why we're constantly doing the videos on the Karagma. Don't take the mark of the beast. This is why we're telling you, hey, don't trust Esau because he's the devil. He's coming to destroy you Israelites out here, man. This is why we're telling you to repent and, and come back unto your how by Shem Yahweh Shah because if you don't, the Lord's going to destroy you. These things we have to constantly repeat over and over and over again, man, because this is how serious this is, man, because if we don't warn you of what your how by Shem Yahweh Shah is about to do, man, we're going to be held liable for it, man, because we have this wisdom and we, you know, uh, and we're supposed to teach it, man. All right. Now, whether they hear or forbear, that's up to you. How about Shem Yahushua, whether they get it or not, man. But at the end of the day, hey, the message was uh, it was sent, man, was continuing out. Verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in this iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Right. So, hey, if we warned you and you still didn't decide to uh to get your uh. Get your life together, man. All right, to to come back unto the Lord, man, to repent, and you to be destroyed. Hey, that was your own fault, man. At the end of the day, our spirits was was uh, vindicated because we told you the truth, whether you wanted to hear it or not, man. You know, but our people, like I said, it's gonna take grave destruction. All right, grave things that happen in their lives to them for them to be able to see that what we were saying was true. Because a lot of our people. Or in that, I got to see it to believe the spirit, man, which is going to end up being to your detriment, man. Okay? But at the end of the day, uh, our mindset that we're always pushing is right here. Sirach 18, 24. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance 
when he shall turn away his face. That's our constant MO. Every day we, we wake up, every day before we go to sleep, and we're constantly meditating on the scriptures, meditating on Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh all right, and, and thinking about this, man, all right, the, the, the wrath that the Lord is about to bring upon the earth, man, that judgment. We don't want no parts of that, man. All right, we're constantly, you know, uh, uh, asking the Lord for forgiveness, for mercy, for 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 protection, man. All right, because we don't want to end up in the Lord's uh, in His vengeance, man. All right, because you Jakes, hey, y'all y'all think Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is just some just nonchalant power that's just going to allow you to just to, to push him over because that's a lot, a lot of you Jakes view Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai as a pushover. That's why you speak of uh, speak about them. And such, you know, ill regard, man. All right, because you don't fear him, man. But we fear you, how about Shem Yahweh That's why the scriptures tell you, hey, through the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Roughly paraphrase it, man. All right, because we know the terror that you, how about Shem is, is is bringing. The scriptures literally call you, how about Shem terrible, man. But you people have been so conditioned off of the lies that you heard from, you know, the world. Like the scriptures tell you, they, your fear was taught by the precepts of men, all right? You don't truly have the the the, the rightful fear of Yahweh HaShem Yahweh Shah, man, okay? When you, when you think of Yahweh HaShem Yahweh Shah, when you think of God, all right, you think of this Edomite pushover, this this mode, like you see in that picture, the, uh, the finger of God, I believe, what it's called, where you have it's supposed to be uh, the most high as a white man, reaching his finger out and, and, and touching, you know, I believe that's supposed to be Adam, you know, and he's butt-ass naked and he's touching him, they fingers touching. Yeah, that's the that's the image you think of the most high. You don't fear. You don't really fear your how about Shem Yahweh Shah, man, because you don't know, you don't understand, all right, how terrible the Lord is, man, all right? Matter of fact, let me get this real quick, man. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. It says, the Lord... Yahweh your power is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, with regard of not persons nor taking reward, man. Yahweh is terrible, man. All right, that's why at one point in the earth, one of his titles was known as Alishaja, man. Terrible demon like power, man. All right, so you don't attribute those characteristics to the God of these people that they uh, worship today, man. But the Lord has always been that same terrible power, man. All right, because like I said, He's the one that kills. He's the one that makes a lot, uh, make it the alive, man. All right, He's the one that creates good and evil, like it tells you in Isaiah 40, uh, 45 and seven, man. But you people don't, you don't believe in that, because really, what it is, all right, getting down to a technical sense, you don't have a true biblical worldview, okay? Because like I said, the Bible has been, you know, uh, uh, dramatized and mysticized in you people's minds to where you don't truly believe the words that's written in this book actually pertains to real-time, real-life situations that it's going to affect you very soon, man. All right, these prophecies that we that we always teach out, uh, teach about, these things are, are, are happening, which shows you the Bible is, is a living book. But you people, you have been dulled, your senses have been dulled, your spirit has been blocked to where... You can't receive it. This is why you don't take the Bible serious, man. Okay? But I have a uh, a quick article I want to read just off of that, that point I made about not having a biblical worldview. So this is from Barna.com. It was written on December 3rd, 2023. It says, A biblical worldview has a radical effect on a person's life. It says, Any objective social analyst would conclude that the United States faces its fair share of moral and spiritual problems. A new research study from Barna Group suggests that there, it's like it suggests that a large share of the nation's moral and spiritual challenges is directly attributable to the absence of a biblical worldview among Americans because the Bible is not being pushed, all right, to you, uh, to to you Americans in its full entirety, man. All right, because you people look at the Bible as just something you can just, you know, go into, take whatever scriptures that that pertain to your way of thinking and throw away the rest of the book. No, you can't add or take away from the Bible because these words are, are concrete, man. All right, it says the all the words of Yahweh Shem Yahweh are pure. All right, 
Sanctify, scripture say the, the words of the Lord were sanctified seven times over, roughly paraphrasing, man. So these words are perfect. So this is the, you can't take these words for light, man. All right? The scriptures are, are what is truly, you know, guiding us in life, man. All right? And and prepare us for the future. We we, we learn the fa uh we learn the past to prepare ourselves from the future or for the future, Salaki. So we understand that as a nation of people that's close unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh we are in this position because we sinned against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So this is why the Lord allowed all these different atrocities to befall us as a nation, man. But we're at a point in time now to where all right, the Lord is is reshaping his elect, all right, you know, beautifying them with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures to prepare them, all right, for the for the uh uh the coming into rulership, man. And all those who are undesired, all right, which are the two thirds of the nation of Israel, you all right will be destroyed because like I said, you are of no use to your how about Shimia was shy, man. Let me get that real quick. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth, and the Israelites are the salt of the earth. We will give this planet flavor. All right? It says, But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? And what gives Israel our salt, man? All right? The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, which comes from the law, statutes, and commandments, man. All right? So if you are without your, uh, uh, what makes you you, which is these scriptures, which, which is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, it says, wherewith shall it be salted? All right? It says, it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. All right? So you're of no use to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, so you're going to be destroyed, man, because at the end of the day, as the scriptures say, you cannot serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah from the grave, man. All right. And the Lord is a power that demands to be worshipped. All right. So if you can't or, or you are not giving praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, then what use are you unto him, man? All right. Let me get that real quick, man. Let's see if I can find it. Y'all bear with me. Can't remember where it's at. Try Google. Yep, Isaiah chapter 38, verse 18. It says, For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit. Can I hope for thy truth, right? And so our people, all right, that have been in America, all right, hey, they've been you were totally, you know, uh, uh, demoralized. They've been subverted, all right. They have been, you know, pretty much conditioned, all right, to to live as a, a Babylonian man, all right, a product of the Edomite imagination, man. They have totally fell from, all right, their uh, uh their position as being. An Israelite to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. So therefore, Proverbs twenty one and sixteen tells you that they that go down, it's like that they uh that wander out of the way of understanding, that go away from the law, statute, commandments of the scriptures, man. All right, it says they shall remember, uh, they shall remain in the congregation of the dead, man. So if you're dead, what happened? What that mean? You're in the grave. All right, and as it just read, Isaiah thirty eight eighteen, for the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth, right? So the pit being being Babylon, man, the system, man, this place, it, it has consumed the souls of, of, of many Israelites, man. And this place has our people all right, worshiping and celebrating all these different idols instead of giving that praise unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's why the Lord is going to get rid of you if you Israelites don't repent, man. All right, because here it is, you've been given the notion that you think that you could serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, how you please, man. You can call it, you can call his name, whatever you want. All right. You could do whatever you want. You have taken on that worldly philosophy of do as thou will. All right. And, and the Christian church has took that and molded it into that saying, come as thou art. But you can't just come to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah anyway, man. 
Nah, man, you got to serve him on how he instructed us to, man. Because when you read, all right, in the uh, in the Old Testament, the things that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua told of our people to do, it was a certain order of, of, of how you sanctify yourself, man. It's a certain order of how you would come in the temple, all right? It's a certain order that you, you know, when, when we were building the uh the temple, the Lord demanded it built exactly as he instructed, man. All right, he Noah built the ark exactly how the Most High instructed. So us being the third temple, all right, if you can receive that, because the third temple is, is a spiritual uh, temple, which is the elect. All right, we are being fashioned in a way that the Lord demands to be, you know, upheld, so that we can, you know, uh, uh, serve Him the correct way, man. All right, and that's why, like I said at the beginning of the lesson, the elect is being beautified. All right, while you know, uh. uh the two thirds are going to pretty much be, you know, destroyed because they're dross, man. They, let me just get it, because we know we're being purified now through the fire. So let me get that first. Zechariah thirteen and eight, and it shall come to pass that in all the land save the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein because. Hey, hey two thirds are are destined to be destroyed because two thirds are the ones that refuse and will and will not return unto the Lord. Therefore, they're going to be destroyed. It says, but the third shall be left therein, man. All right, the third being the elect, starting with the 144,000 prophets and the, and the rest of the men, women, the, uh, men, women, and children that believe. Okay? It says, and I will bring the third part through the fire, man, the fire being all right, the, the cleansing, all right, the sufferings that we face and the different hardships and trials and tribulations that we go through, man, all right? The test to show that we really believe in the Lord, man, and the elect is gonna is gonna come to that fire, all right, with their faith, all right, fortified, man, all right. Keep using that word, man, all right. The elect is gonna come out that fire, beautiful, okay, because we we are being refined by that fire, man, okay. It says and we'll refine them as silver is refined, and we'll try them as gold is tried, man, and we know that a hey, gold, real gold and silver that's brought through the fire, man. All right, the, 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 I'm going to keep finishing. I'm going to finish it out. It says, they shall call them, matter of fact, yeah, so let me say that. Yeah, so gold and silver, when you're, when you're uh, putting it through the fire, man, all right, all the impurities that's on them get melted off. And like I said, you keep putting it through the fire to where at the end of it, when you can see your, your face in it, that's how you know that it is, is, is pure now, man. All right. And a two thirds. They're going to be burned away because they don't have any purity in them, man. They they are, you know, uh, the dross that is on, you know, that uh, that gold and silver, man. All right. Which when you look at it as a whole, two thirds are, are a stain to the nation of Israel because two thirds make us look bad, man. All right. But why the elect? OK, is pretty much, you know, we're supposed as Israel as a whole, we're supposed to be a beautiful people, a righteous people, man, a, a, a people that the world looks up to man but because the, the two-thirds are the majority how they look is how the, the the world perceives the nation of israel man all right and that's even amongst the circumcision man all right these two-third israelite groups man that that's you know had the notoriety over you know the, the true teachers that's how the world views us man off of the the eyes of off the view of, of two-thirds man and this is why the lord is going to destroy them and leave the one-third man all right, because we are the true representation of the Lord. Lord, whether we we be of that number, the Lord is going to see Himself within us, man. All right, so it says, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say it is my people, and they shall say this. It's like they shall say the Lord is my power. Right, so. And the elect is acknowledging that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is his people. I mean, is his is our power, and the Lord is going to acknowledge us as being his people, man. All right. So let's get that draw scripture. I'll quote it. All right. This is Ezekiel twenty two and eighteen. It says, "Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver." Therefore, thus saved the Lord, Yahweh Shemiah because you are all become dross. 
Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. Now, when you read this in the NLT, verse 19, it says, So tell them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, because ye are worthless slag. That's what dross is, man. It is worthless, man. It is worthless, Salakia. It says, because you are worthless slag, I will bring you to the crucible in Jerusalem. You know, so I'm going to go back to verse uh, 20 in the, K in the KJV. It says, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow fire upon it, to, it says, to melt it, I will gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Two thirds are going to be melted because you are worthless. They say the scripture called you dross, man. Let's just go into that word dross real quick, man. All right, so it's H5509. It says, it's like it. Find a good definition. All right, so yeah, it says in the uh, interlinear, the lexicon, it says the silver of dross, i.e. not yet refined, baser metals with having been mixed with purer, it's separated from it by melting, right? So the lower is going to separate you two-thirds from the nation of Israel, all right? Or it's like two-thirds from the elect of the nation of Israel, all right? And you're going to be melted away, man. So all that's left is is the beautiful parts of Jerusalem, which is the elect, man. All right, the 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 people that the Lord has refined to see Himself in, man. So when the look when the when the world looks upon the elect, all right, they're gonna see Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right, which is how the whole nation's supposed to be. But like I said, two thirds, all right, they are consumed by the spirit of Babylon, man. All right, so this is why we're you know bringing it all the way back. To Sirach 18 and 24, think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face, man. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is, hey, he's angry with you niggas out here, man. Because you you are supposed to be a, a, a representation of him and you have been molded into a representation of the devil, these Edomites, man. Because that's what a nigga is, man. A nigga is, is, is a personification of... Uh, uh, of an Edomite, man. You're, you're a chocolate Edomite, man. All right? Spiritual Edomites, man. All right? Because you are you are in, in you have been made in the image of Esau, man. All right? So this is why the Lord is going to destroy you. So this is why we're, we're telling our people, man, what are your actions that you're doing today according to what the scriptures say on the reward for the righteous and the wicked? The scriptures tell you if you continue in the ways of righteousness, you will reap righteousness. But if you continue in the ways of wickedness, that's what you're going to sow. Like it says in Galatians 6 and 7, man, you reap what you sow, man. All right. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm going to get it real quick. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, be not deceived. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, right? Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is not mocked, man. He sees everything that you people are doing, man. All right? So even if you're claiming that you you believe in the Most High, all right, you believe in the Son, all right, you, you, you believe the truth, you believe in the Bible, your works that's being done, whether in public or behind the scenes, is all being seen by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because it tells you, all right, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Beholding all the secret parts of man. So the Lord sees everything. He can see your spirit. Like it says in Zephaniah 3 and 12, man. Uh, uh, real quick. I know I'm doing a lot of quoting, but that's just the spirit, man. Zephaniah 1 and 12. Salaki. It says, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil, right? So, hey, the Lord, 
is 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 searching Jerusalem with candles, man. And, and what is the candle? That's your spirit, man. Real quick. In the book of Proverbs. Chapter 20 and 27, it reads, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. All right, so the Lord is, is, is he's searching Jerusalem with candles. The Lord is searching all of our people's spirits to see, all right, what, what, is your, uh, what is your mind on, man? All right, who do you truly worship at the end of the day, man? All right, because hey, you can't serve two masters at the end of the day. If you're not serving Yahweh Bashim Yahushua in entirety, you're not you're not serving him, man. And you're serving yourself, which really is, is, is Satanism, man. Because Satanism, in a nutshell, is is pretty much making yourself a god, man. All right? And when you're doing that, you're worshiping Satan, man. All right? So at the end of the day, man, it, hey, if you're settled on your leads, man, as it says, it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leads that say in the heart the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil, because you don't you don't truly fear your how about Shem Yahushua. You don't think that we're telling you how the Lord if hey, if you don't get right, how he will destroy you. You don't believe that, man. All right. And if you do, you you believe the, that judgment is far off, man. Like it says in uh, uh Ezekiel twelve, I'm gonna just quote it because I'm I'm not gonna read it. It says that, you know, uh uh the Lord's gonna call that proverb in Israel to cease, man, that the Lord's not gonna come in their lifetime. Yes. The Lord is going to come in your life. That's why I, I read earlier the prophecy letting us know the signs and the times, man. And we see all those signs and times happening now. Now, man. So now was the time for you to be getting yourself together. Stop playing with your how about Shem Yahushua, man. Hey, the fear of the Lord will be put in the earth again of the Lord, man. All right? You people think think the Lord is sweet, man. And you're going to be destroyed, man. Okay? Because at the end of the day, all these different things that's going on, man, you don't truly believe that it's going to come upon you, man. All right? But, hey, we, we see it. We understand it. And that's putting fear in us. That's why, at the end of the day, hey, as for me and my house, man, we will serve the Lord, man. We're going to, hey, we're going to, hey, forsake this world, man. We're going to look to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and do what we need to do in the spirit to make sure that we're good in the eyes of the Lord, man. All right? So, that's, it, it's plain as day that it's time for us to get right, man. The time of game playing is over, man. Okay? This is Sirach. 39 and 24, it says, As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. Right? So, hey, the Lord said his ways are plain to the holy, but a stumbling block unto the wicked, man. That's why you, you got people out here getting caught up on different things, man, which is, which is pretty much not allowing them to fully come into, the, into these scriptures, man. All right, they got some type of gripe with the Lord. All right, they're offended in something. All right, they they their unbelief won't allow them to accept certain things. All right, but it's made everything's been made plain unto the holy though, man. Okay, so as it says, for the good things, for the for the good are good things created from the beginning, right? So the Lord is gonna take care of the righteous. It says so evil things for sinners. So all the judgments, all the wickedness that's going on. These things were made for the wicked, man, okay? For the sinners, man, which are the wicked, okay? For the principal things, for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour, wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape. The, it says, and oil and clothing, all these are things for the sake. All these things are good for the godly. So to the sinner, they are turned into evil, right? Because the Lord is going gonna, is gonna to provide us with our daily necessities in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. But these things are going to be a snare unto the wicked, man. Because these things are going to be used against you, all right, to pretty much, you know, put you in, in straits, man. All right, to put you in a, in a bind. All right, to ultimately bring judgment upon you, man. All right? Because hey, hey, with Esau taking these things, you know, from you, which is what the, the great reset, the NWO, is telling you. You will own nothing and, and, and be happy. They're going to make everything to where if it's not, if you're not pretty much uh getting it from him, you ain't going to have it, man. All right? Which is going to cause a lot of our people, all right, to, to bow the knee to Satan and get that karagma, which is going to seal the destruction, man. 
This is what this is all leading up to you, to where the Lord is making you make a decision. Do you fear him or do you fear the devil, which is, you know, the so-called white man? All right. And if you don't fear your how about Shem Yahweh if you have anything that, that you're putting fear over the Lord, you're going to be destroyed, man. That's why the scriptures tell you to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, man. All right. Because if you have the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Because you don't fear the Lord more than whatever it is that you're putting over him, man. Okay? So continuing on, verse 27. All the, uh, verse 28. It says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hail and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction, man. And these are the judgments that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is bringing, all right, to pretty much, you know, put fear in you, man, all right? And as we see it, all right, if you are thinking carnally coming into these times that we're seeing, man, you're not going to find a way out, all right? And this is why we need Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai without a doubt, man. We're going to have to have Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai with us to be able to get us out of these things, man. This is why we meditate on the destruction, man. All right, to put the fear on us to, to where we have no choice but to seek the Lord, man. Okay? This is so, uh, uh, this is Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 17. It says, woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Which is what I just said. This is why you have to... You have to be spiritual, spiritually minded, man. Having your mind on your how about Shimei Abishai all the time coming into these times now, man. Because we, we know that outside of the Lord, there's nobody that's going to be able to deliver us from these things, man. All right. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Right, as I mentioned, the beginning of the sorrows has already begun. We're seeing people in distress already. And it have not reached the pinnacle point yet, man. Okay, so all these things that we're reading—the beginning, of the, uh, the, the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils—these things are taking place all right now, man. All right, they're beginning now, man. They're only going to intensify, man. All right. It says, what shall I do when these evils shall come? And the only answer that you can do is return, is repent, and seek Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah's face, man. That's it. That's your only option, man. There's no other way around that, man. Okay? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendments. It's like it's scourges for amendments. All right, to to pretty much you know, put that uh put that fire on you, to make you uh, uh uh repent, man. It says before all these things, they shall not return from their wickedness, nor be mindful of the scourges. Right, two thirds are gonna are gonna be so wrapped up in their carnality that they're not gonna see these things for what they are, man. All right, at mom's minutes to make you get right with the Lord, so they're gonna rely carnally to try to escape from these different things, which is why the scriptures say. Let me get that real quick. Luke 17 and 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. All right. So that's what is going to happen. If you're looking at this carnally, if you try to save yourself, you're going to be destroyed. Like I say, if only way that you can get out of this is by... Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right? That's why in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, the curses tells you, no man shall redeem thee. You're not going to have nobody that's going to help you, nobody that's going to uh, uh, deliver you, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. That's it. Okay? And two-thirds, you're going to find out the hard way, man. This is why you have to be learning about Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai now, man. Okay? Everything that's happening, as I quoted earlier, this is coming from the Lord, Isaiah 45 and 7, man. All right. Job 19 and 29. Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bring the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. 
okay? Be afraid of the sword and know who's bringing the sword, man. All right? Yahawabashim Yahweh man. Everything that we see Esau doing, that's still of Yahawabashim Yahweh Shai, because Psalm 17 and 13, it says, Arise, uh, uh, pretty much, you know, uh, Esau is the sword of the Most High, man. All right? Roughly paraphrasing, okay? So everything that the Lord is bringing upon this earth, all right, as, as you know, that's it's scary as hell, man. This is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doing this, all right, to destroy the wicked, okay? And Lord willing, we're of, uh, of the righteous. We're going to be saved from all this, man. First Peter 4 and 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So it's going to begin at you Israelites. Hence, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, man, all right? Alas, alas, now is the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Jeremiah 30 and 7, man. These things are all being done to judge you wicked niggas that refuse to repent, man. All right? Everything is being done for the controversy of Zion, man. All right? And, and, and the elect, okay, we're being justified by all this because Lord willing the world of that number. We wish to see righteousness, man, and that can't happen until the wicked is put out, man. Esau... All right, and you two-third niggas got to go. And you heathen. Y'all got to go, man. All right? So we know judgment is going to begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah? Okay? So if, if it's not going to be, it's like it says, if it begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel, right? So if we're if we're going through hell right now, all right, but we're being refined through it. How much more you wicked niggas out here when it when it begins to touch y'all, man? Because we're being purified now. We're being put through the fire now. So Lord willing, hey, our our uh you know, our our uh, impurities can be removed. So in Jacob's trouble, we'll we'll we we've, we've already been tested, okay? Which is gonna lead up ultimately to that hour of temptation, the hour of testing, all right, that mark of the beast. But the Lord's gonna bring us through it because our faith has been tested over and over and over again to where we get in into that moment, it's going to be instinct to move in the spirit, man. Okay? But uh, to them that obey not the gospel, all right, because to, to the people of the world, when we go through our hell, man, hey, they, they, look, at, they look at us like it's, it's a, it, the worst thing to happen, which, hey, we eat it. But at the end of the day, when that begins to happen to you people, when judgment begins to happen to you niggas, you bitches, man, it's going to be bad for you, man. It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear, man? So the Lord said he's going to, you know, deliver the elect by the skin of, uh, of their teeth. Hey, what's going to happen to to the wicked, man? You're going to be destroyed in your wickedness, man. All right. So this is why I ended on the drop the mic scripture. This is Luke 13 and 3. I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Okay? And then jumping down to verse 5 of Yahweh, I said it again. This is all red letter. I tell you, yea, or nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So you've been given two options, man. To repent or die, man. That's it. That's that's your only options. Okay? That's how you're going to uh, leap out this place, man. All right? In a in a uh, uh, in a chariot, or or burn, man. You know, you either gonna fly or fry, man. That's it. So, with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the elect. Shalom.